how are you? Shall we study Bible together? Uh, shall we pray? Father in heaven, please teach us your word. Thank you. Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right. Well, we have been continuing study the book of Romans. Today, uh, we're going to study the chapter 6, the Romans chapter 6, verse 15 to 23. The title of today's message is Sanctification. Whose slave are you? <laughs> That's a kind of an interesting title. Uh, now, I have a question. Um, that is, uh, what do you think what will happen if a Christian continuously commit the sin? Well, as, as you know, uh, we Christians, uh, we're, well, we have been forgiven, our sins are forgiven, that uh, Jesus took all our sin upon his cross, and um, uh, he died, and then he resurrected, and God considered us uh, clean, if you're a Christian, if we believe. That Jesus died for me, uh, for you, and then he resurrect. Now, that's called that uh, we've been justified. We 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 become like uh, our sins are forgiven, and then that is another reason that uh, we can go to heaven, because only holy one can go enter into the holy God's place, the heaven. And then the Bible also uh, promises us that if you're a Christian, you're going to have an eternal life. Now, that sounds all good, but, but, but let me ask you. If Christian, if a person who accepts Jesus, but after that, if the Christian continuously or habitually, I will say, commit the sin, do you think God will continue to forgive? I mean, well, what do you think? <laughs> well, today's topic is about sin. Now, uh, we're talking about sanctification. Sanctification is a process to be uh, become sanctified or become holy. See, um, after you become a Christian, uh, indeed, God, uh, uh, you know, uh, declare the Christians are. Uh, uh, sinless. I mean that Jesus took all the sin, but Christian can commit the sin. We still have the, this Adamic body that came from our parents. And then the, um, but the issues are that with the, with the power of the Holy Spirit that reside in us, that we we'll walk with God, we, we walk with Holy Spirit and with the power of the Holy Spirit gradually we become sanctified, gradually we become holier, gradually we become like Jesus. And that process is called sanctification. And from my own experience, it's, it has some, some kind of wave, I would say, or like a step. Uh, you know, I become very uh, Christian, <laughs> and then, then sometimes kind of ease out, and then become, again, I, I'll kind of repent, and then become very good uh, Christian again stuff. Um, but then as years go by, I think even guy like me become a little bit more holier than before, I would say. Uh, you know, and then usually the Christian will commit the less crime as you go, uh, you become more mature in the Christianity. Uh, let me read the first John, uh, chapter 5, verse 16, say, if the Christian commit the sin, you should pray. Uh, let me read that. 1 John chapter 5, verse 16. If you see any brother or sister commit a sin, that does not lead to death. You should pray, and God will give them life. I refer to those whose sin does not lead to death. There is a sin that leads to death. I am not saying that you should pray about that. Now, the John describing two kinds of sin. Uh, the one that kind of uh, you, you, you can pray and then the, uh, you, you'll be forgive, given. But the, there's, a, there's a sin that, um, that lead to death, kind of an unforgiving sin. And then my interpretation, I think if you really deny Jesus, not believing God, 
and then I think you will end up in death and uh, or eternal pun uh, death. I mean, uh, so you know, some people maybe pretend to be Christian, but maybe that person is not really Christian. But see, if the Holy Spirit is really reside in that person, which means if that person is really become a Christian, I think the the sanctification process will start. Uh, let me read. The following uh, verse 17 18 from the first John chapter 5. Let me read that. All wrongdoing is sin, and there is sin that does not lead to death. We know that anyone born of God does not commit to sin. The one who was born of God keeps them safe, and the evil one cannot harm them. So I think that what the real uh, John's point is that if you become a Christian, um, you really should not really commit the sin. And as you progress, as you become more sanctified, uh, eventually, um, you know, I, I think from my own experience, the Christian become more and more, I would say, holier, more and more that you won't really commit the sin. Uh, you know, I know there may be little small sins there, but in the, those little ones you can can be forgiven. But the big ones, uh, the Christian not gonna commit the sin anymore. Uh, let me read today's verse, the Roman chapter six, verse fifteen. What the Paul said about the uh, sanctification of sin. Let me read that part. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? By no means. Now, uh, verse uh, 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 15, the chapter 6 in uh, Romans, the Paul strongly denied that Christian commit the sin. I mean, see, it basically uh, the Paul's point is that Christians are under the grace. You know, so really, Jesus died for you, and uh, He resurrect, and um, you know, Jesus is one took our sins, and uh, so w we really don't deserve this. But then all this is because it is the grace of God. God loves you so much, and uh, that's why Jesus died on the cross. Now the question is. Oh, Jesus died a long time ago, which, which means if I commit any sin, my future sin, he has been already forgiven 2,000 years ago, so I can commit a sin. No, 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 no. The point is, Paul is saying, you have been forgiven, and definitely you should not sin anymore. And um, this is the strongest denial word in the Greek word being used here. There is no way, it's absolutely no no way that you can continue to commit the sin. Um, now, let me ask you, I mean, we, we, we uh, really try to live, uh, try to follow the law, uh, because there's a punishment, right? Uh, you know, I mean, well, I, I, I remember, I watched the movie a long time ago. I cannot remember what the a title of the movie was, but uh, what I remember the scene was that I think it was um, a Russian soldier you know, during the World War II. I think the Russian soldier entered into the German town, and there was a, 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 a grocery, grocery store. And then the scene I remember is if there's a no law uh, under the circumstances such as war, I think those soldiers went to the grocery store and then they just snatched the you know beer and the wines and the bread and they start eating as they are fighting. Uh, see, if there's a no law and if there's a no punishment, I think we people would do wild. Even we have a law, um, there's all, still we have a crime. I mean, crime everywhere, uh, you know. Uh, so maybe good idea to make our uh, uh, law enforce much stronger. For example, that if if you commit the sin, uh, or if you commit, if you break the law, maybe we can make even easy ones. Maybe easily we can say, oh, we're gonna give you this sentence. If that case, maybe do you think uh, uh, the crime will be will gone? Like, oh, you parked wrong place. Okay. 
you 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 send it to the death sentence, <laughs> or you say, oh, you did the jaywalking. No, you 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 going to the death death sentence. I mean, <laughs> do, do you know what I mean? I mean, do you think if we really made the uh, uh, sentence very strong, like a death sentence, do you think people would not commit the sin? Now you probably know what I'm talking about. See. The fact is, we all been under the death sentence. See, the Adam commit the sin, and uh, we become just like Adam. And there's a God's law, God's rule, and that's called righteousness. But we continue, we have been continued to break God's law, and that will lead to death, which means all the people. All the people uh, are under the death uh, uh, sentence, but however, there's a grace of God that God became a man, and because He really loves us, uh, for Him we are very valuable, and He loves us so much that God became a man, and man uh, Jesus went on the cross, and He died on cross on the cross. On our behalf, he become ultimate sacrifice, and then he resurrect in three days. So he's alive; he's not dead. If we believe that, then the the anyone who believes going to have uh, the I mean their their sins, their death sentence being forgiven. Um, now that is called grace. See, Paul's point is the Christians are under the grace. Not under the law. Uh, otherwise, you 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 are you sh you should have been uh, sent to a, a death sentence uh, to the eternal punishment uh, and uh, eternal uh, uh, you know eternally gone. But then you have eternal life now. So he was saying, if when you become a Christian, no way you should continue uh, sin. Now let me read verse sixteen. Don't you know that when you offer yourself to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of that one you obey, whether you are slave to sin, which is let uh, lead to death, or to obedience, which lead to righteousness. Now Paul, here in verse sixteen, saying, "Don't you know? I mean, you didn't know. I mean, if you be obedient." To a, 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 a the person or whoever, you become a sin. You become a slave. I mean, you become a slave to whoever owns you. See the word slave here. I think the uh, do, dola do, do, dola or whatever it is. <laughs> do, <laughs> in the Greek word, uh, I'm not that good at Greek. Uh, but anyway, uh, that word when I check uh, the Greek word for slave here is somebody being bound. You know, like I think, I think the images are like somebody really bound and then lost all the freedom, so the owner of the slave, uh, basically, uh, 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 that person don't have any power over that person, and they can't. They have to obedient, have to do anything what the master said. Uh, that person is a slave. The question is that uh, uh, Paul saying, if you continue sin. Don't you didn't know that you are now the under the slave of sin? You become a, a slave to sin. You cannot really get out from it, and um, um, that will lead to death. I think you rather should be the slave to God, uh, or sometimes we say servant to God, servant of God. So Paul saying you didn't know you become a slave. <laughs> you don't. You will lose your freedom. You will be bound to a uh, sin, and then verse seventeen, eighteen. Paul continues to say this, but thanks to be to God that though you used to be slave to sin, you have come to obey from your heart the patterns of teaching that has now uh, claimed your uh, 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 allegiance. You have been set free from sin. And have become slave to righteousness. 
uh, suddenly from verse 17, Paul now thank God and say, oh, Lord, thank you. Now, why, why is he saying that? Because he's saying this, that you used to be slave to sin, uh, but then no longer because you really become obedient to God's teaching and you really understand God's being. Most of all, you believed that God's word. And now you are slave to righteousness. You become a slave. You become a, really a servant of God. So Paul was really thanking God. Oh, these Christian people, they no longer slave to sin. But the, the, the why there, why the Christians are not uh, 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 sin, under the sin of, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, un, uh, under the slave of sin, because Christian really believes God's teaching. Most of all, we, we believe the gospel. Now, gospel, the core essence, is uh, God loves you, and He died for you, and He resurrects. See, the love is really the, the, the uh, if we en encompass all the God's uh, law, uh, really, that becomes love. The, you know, God said the, the greatest commandment is love God and love your neighbor. So, Anything we do, if we really based on really true love, um, that is really the God's, God's command. Um, I mean, you know, so basically what the Paul saying is, thank Lord that these people used to be under the slave of sin, and they're bound. They just do things or believe things that are really contrary to what's God's righteousness. However, the Christian people, we, because we believe God's word and we are obedient to God's word, that we now able to demonstrate that God's law, which is the righteousness of God, that's really based on love. So I think that God is, uh, 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 Paul is really uh, saying that uh, Christians are very, very, uh, now it's no longer slave to sin. We have become actually free uh, from sin. And it feels good if you follow God's law instead of uh, 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 under the slave. And let's move on to verse 19. I am using an example from everyday life because of your human limitation. Just as you need to offer yourself as slave to impurity and to ever-increasing wickedness, so now offer yourself as slave to righteousness leading to holiness. Uh, now Paul is saying that, uh, now I'm going to tell you more like a, a layman's word, kind of what he will say, I'm going to use the word, uh, I'm going to explain things that what I'm talking about is a more easier term. And basically what the Paul is saying is, your body, your hands and feet, you used to, you used to use that for really sinful things. But now, you should use your physical body, actually body you inherit from the, your parents, and then actually eventually came from Adam. This Adamic body that we have, this physical body that we have now, um, that end up going to become a dust. But God is inside of our physical body, uh, the Holy Spirit. Our physical body become a temple of Holy Spirit. So we really should glorify God through our physical body. Um, you know, the church is a building. And quite often people think, oh, the church is a holy place. I have to say that church is just a mere building. Really a holy place should be your physical body. And with your physical, this body, that uh, Paul was indicating that you should use that to really glorify God. Now, I, I, I can give you some example. I, I just, uh, it was like a, about a month ago or so, I met a missionary from the United States. I met here in Japan, and I had a chance to talk to uh, him. He, his name Mark. And uh, uh, he told me, he just, you know, a few days before I met him, 
he was in uh, 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 the prefecture called Ishikawa Prefecture in Japan. Do you remember that on January 1st, the Japan had a very, very big earthquake and there many, many people lost their homes. And then uh, this missionary went to that location and helping, helping a lot of people who lost a home and uh, don't have any food and water. Uh, see, uh, you, you have to understand that uh, Christianity, I mean, lots of missionary here in Japan, they're doing a lot, lot of great work. And really, they're using their physical body. And then Mark was very uh, tired the time I met him because he really had to help a lot of uh, people, the victim of the earthquake. I think I'm very proud of the guy like him. Um, there's another uh, talking about the missionary. Um, uh, maybe most of you probably didn't know this. Uh, we had the uh, 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 Toya. The, the, this is uh, um, the ferry between uh, ferry in Japan, and this this particular uh, accident happens in uh, uh, 1954, uh, September 26. And then uh, it was the biggest, uh, uh, you know, the highest thing, ferry accident in Japan. And uh, it was uh, uh, 1, uh, 100, 1,155 people died. Uh, that's, a, that's great. Uh, that's, that's, uh, that's too much. And then uh, you see that these slides, uh, these two missionaries, they were on that uh, ship. On a, a ferry, and then uh, yeah, both of them died. Uh, the 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 guy's name is uh, uh, Alfred Russell Stone. He was 52 the time he had this accident, and then uh, another guy is uh, Dean Leeper. Uh, he was 34 years old, and they both were missionary to Japan, and they were they were on the boat. But then the, uh, there was eyewitness uh, 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 survived. They're saying that some survivor telling how they died. Uh, they gave their life jacket to another young Japanese people person, and telling them that uh, we missionary, we're Christians, and we have eternal life. But then please find the uh, eternal life, and they gave the life jacket to uh, you know, uh, Japanese, uh, young, young, young Japanese people. And um, that's how they died. They really sacrificed themselves. And then, uh, you know, both of them had a family, uh, like uh, uh, Dean Deeper, had a, he was 34, so he, his children, I think he had a four kids, four children. He, their children were very, very young, like, uh, you know, uh, two, three, two, three, four years old. Um, I really uh, sad that they lost, uh, you know, that little kids uh, lost their uh, uh, father. Uh, but then, but then these Christians really showed love. Uh, they they gave the life jacket to other person, and then that's how they died. Uh, now, this kind of people, I'm very proud, and I think, I think really God really telling us that um, we really should show the God's glory by using our physical body. And so the, so the Paul indicate here is, uh, see, the Christians should not commit the sin and then we have to stop committing sin. Instead, uh, we should really be slave to righteousness and then really uh, in a layman's term, it, what that is, is that uh, you should use your physical body for good, uh, uh, for uh, righteousness, not not using physical body to commit the sin. Um, you know, I mean, uh, then let me read next verse twenty and twenty one. When you are slave to sin, you are free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you leap at that time from the things you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. Now, what the Paul saying in verse 20 and 21 is uh, he's kind of asking people, uh, before you bec become a Christian, you are under the slavery of sin. And during that time, is there anything good happens? I mean, what was the result from the, uh, being, being in sinful stage? Uh, that, that maybe many things, maybe kind of you maybe feel shamed now. Uh, do you know, I, I was uh, watching a special TV program here in Japan not, not a long time ago, 
and there was uh, they showing the some young girls. Um, they don't they don't really care. They are carelessly uh, become a prostitute. They they try to make easy money, and then the, um, they receive uh, uh, very, uh, you know the uh, sexually transmitted disease. Um, in, in in the United States, uh, there's a lot of lots uh, young girl. They just carelessly, uh, you know, stand on the street, and many of them even do some kind of drug, and uh, they they setting themselves. And not only that, uh, there's a lots uh, men buying them, and then as a result, the uh, sexual transmit disease has been skyrocketed. Uh, rocket is 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 just crazy. And then those those uh, you know venereal uh, uh, disease, uh, it's not easy to cure. I mean, most of them you cannot cure, and then you have to take a very strong uh, uh, drug, uh, and uh, uh, like a cefarin, uh, you cannot really cure too well. And then uh, the, what happened is, I think, uh, some kind of parasite kind of a, a state, I think the uh, pro, pro, protozoa kind of a kind of a stay in the body, I would say, and then it kind of eat you up, kind of. Um, see, those sexual uh, transmitted disease is a serious matter. Um, and then uh, the question is, I think, is, um, I, I know not everyone will do this, but what the Paul is saying is that the things you have done in the past, uh, now you should be, is there anything good come out of it? Like, uh, you know, all the sinful things you can think of. Um, is, is there anything good happens from that, that sinful things you have been doing? You, ha you used to do it. And then, uh, now, if you uh, 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 think, think back, that you feel really shameful. Uh, now, I think why Paul really mentioned these things in uh, uh, this, his uh, uh, book of Roman, because uh, if you look at the next photograph, I um, mean, this guy, uh, I think Epicureans, I think his name is Epicurean. This guy is a Greek, well, I don't know what we call it, scholar or not, but uh, Epicurean, uh, somewhere around uh, two to 300 BC, he was saying something called uh, uh, hedonism. Uh, hedonism means like uh, he was basically saying, this guy basically saying is, oh, there may be no God or God, that doesn't matter. But as we live, uh, maybe we should just enjoy our life. And so uh, Epicureans, uh, he made the gardens. Uh, and then what I, what I understand is uh, in, in this kind of private, uh, gardens, uh, you know, he uh, invited uh, lots of people, uh, well, like a membership, I will say, and they, they, they did lots of sinful things. They just did uh, uh, hedonism. Means, uh, oh, let's have a fun, and so maybe they drink, and they, there's a free sex. They, they may be making love with with everyone they met, kind of. Um, now, this probably this kind of uh, um, uh, hedonism was kind of very popular uh, the time the Paul was writing this letter in the time of the Roman Empire as well. And so even back then, even the time the Paul writing, I'm talking about 2,000 years ago, people just having just fun time and they think, oh, the life is so short. Let's have a fun. Uh, let me show you the next picture. This is a current uh, picture of the downtown Tokyo um, and then, you know, anywhere, even downtown, uh, you know, uh, somewhere downtown in the United States, like uh, downtown Philadelphia, um, downtown in New York, um, any big city, there is a people just, uh, you know, having, they say, oh, there, maybe there's no God or God, but my life is very short. Let's have a fun time, we're young. But then, the Paul said, is that anything good come out from that kind of a lifestyle? Um, you know, maybe someone thinks that you feel really uh, shame now. And uh, um, so basically, if when you become a Christian, those lifestyle, you just have to put away. Those are 
if you kill, continue doing it, those lifestyle really led to led uh, led to uh, 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 death and destruction. And then basically, uh, you feel really shame. There's nothing good come out. And um, uh, so Paul was saying that you become a slave to those world. So basically, he was saying that you have to be away from it, and then you know you now you're a servant of God, so uh, uh, have to be obedient to Holy Spirit. Um, let me continue to read verse 22. But now that you have been set free from sin, and have become slaves of God, the benefit you leap, uh, 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 reap lead to holiness. And the result is eternal life. The Paul's point is very clear: that you used to be slave to sin, but because you now become a Christian and now you are under the grace, uh, God does forget forgive your uh, sin. He has been forgiving your sin, and then now, but it's not no way that you can continue sin because now you are under the grace. And basically, Paul is saying that if you continue sin, you are under the slave. Um, you you become a you know you become a slave to sin, and there's nothing good come out of it. But uh, now you're a slave to God, and um, you can use your physical body, uh, your hands and feet, for something good. And um, you know, I mean, any any place, even your workplace. Uh, you can use your hands and feet to really serve your customer with your sincere love towards the customer um, or anybody around us. We should really use our physical body and then we just do the sincerity we're going to work and um, uh, you know in, instead of using our physical body to really doing some sinful stupid things I would say and then nothing really the result usually not very really good. I mean, so, and then the uh, uh, you know I I I read the some of the book uh, here in Japan that uh, there was a, a scholar really tried to explain about the Christianity, and this Japanese scholar uh, telling uh, in his in his writing. Uh, no, actually, I have that book. Uh, this is a book. Um, uh, this is a secular Japanese scholar comparing the Buddhism and Christianity. And when I read this, what I really surprised was these guys were telling us that all oh, Christian um, that they think that God command to love others. So whether you love that person or not, or love your enemy, uh, all that is uh, you don't really love. The enemy, you don't really love the person, but then because it's a command, you are forced to love others, and uh, that is what the Christian. That's what this guy is saying. This is a Japanese scholar saying, "We Christian try to be good is a really hypocrite. We really don't want to be good. We we just have to do it because God says so. We're 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 it was a command. We're we're um, we're doing it from the obligation." Uh, of uh, you know what the God said because of the Christian religion is uh, you are totally 100% obedient to God and then anything God say you have to do even the things you don't want to do such as love your enemy but you still have to do and because uh, uh, that is a command from God now from my viewpoint that's not really what the Christianity is I think my view viewpoint is because God loves us and God is love, and we really wanted to do what God said because that is the right thing to do. It is not like uh, we we we, we uh, obligations or like uh, it was a command. Even though sometimes we use that kind of word there, but it's basically we really wanted to do good because those are right things, and most of all the. Become a Christian means the Holy Spirit inside of us, and as we are obedient to God and the Holy Spirit, it's naturally we'll do the good things. And if we do the good things, as a result, uh, frankly, it feels good. <laughs> it's 
it's much more great feeling than uh, you know hedonism like uh, you know uh, this this Greek scholar back then uh, say oh let's have a fun but the real fun is not doing sinful things the real fun and real joy and uh, 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 excitement and uh, enjoyment came from being doing good and uh, following God's law I, I, I can testify actually, actually it feels really good to do something good things <laughs> don't you think so basically uh, you know it's not uh, sometimes uh, uh, people especially like people from another religion like a Buddhism here or like um, you know a non-christian people they think Christian they are hypocrite the inside they're just sinful as any other people but they just pretend to be clean and pretend to be doing good and um, they really doing the uh, you know uh, gospel telling gospel because they have to and they really don't want to but they have to uh, but, but the fact is the real Christianity is that we want to because uh, you know the God is with us and as a result that if we do the good things we become a, a servant of God it's much 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 freedom and joyful and fun than being a slave to sin and that's that's really clear and then let me read that today's uh, last verse with a very famous verse verse 23 for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord now the Paul's point here is very clear that once you become a Christian there is something called sanctification will start now what is the sanctification because the once you become Christian God going to reside inside of your physical body the God himself now with you see our God is such a wonderful God that uh, he knows our weakness he knows without him we are uh, we become like a lost sheep and we kind of end up going back to uh, uh, got a slave to be, you know, slave to sin. Um, but but then now God is with us. So the Christian, I'm talking about real Christian. We won't do continuously sin. We will we will have a step. Yes, uh, there sometimes some people take a little bit a long time to be holier. But as being Christian, we will be uh, little by little we become holier. And at the eventually, we become kind of person who will not commit the sin. And uh, well, I know there's uh, lots of very holy uh, Christians I have, I have met. Um, you know, I went to uh, Dallas Theological Seminary, and some of the professors were wonderful people. I thought, I thought some of the professor is I thought was uh, maybe angel, maybe not. But <laughs> what I mean is, really, they, they talk like a person from heaven you know I, 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 I went to uh, some of the American churches and there is very very mature Christians there you know and also the minister was a very very kind person and uh, and they doing the lots of good things and then you know and then they they just every one of them I met they have a wonderful smile they they're not doing uh, good things because obligation that they have to they're doing with the joy and the fun and they have and then the, the, the Christian have a wonderful smile because that is the free total freedom that they they, they they got from being doing good and uh, so that is what the Paul's point is um, a Christian should not continue sin no way that you should do that you are under the grace and then there are it's much better to be a servant of God the servant of righteousness much better to do good things than bad thing much better to love your neighbor or love your God and neighbor and then from that you do the uh, action of love uh, than really 
using your physical body for really committing sinful things. It's, it's, there's nothing good come out from the、uh, sinful world. But see, your real joy came from obedience to righteous God. Now, Paul's stating is that the wage of sin is death. And that's exactly everyone was being, this being a, a called a death sentence. But、uh, because of Jesus, now we have a grace and the gift of God, which is death of、uh, Jesus on the cross and his resurrection. God gave us a life, and that is the eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, thank you for today's message. The sanctification process. Sometimes the,、uh, you know, uh, some people really continue to sin. But that's no way that we Christians should avoid from the sin and then not continue sin. And、uh, we should be rather under the slave of righteousness. Lord, thank you. Thank you. Just in prayer. Amen. All right. You take care. Have a nice day. Bye bye. <laughs>